Hi, my name is Adam Prince. I work at Crisp Line Metal Forming, and uh, today we are repairing a motorcycle frame. Uh, the foot peg on another frame has uh, broken off. This is a good frame, but I wanted to show you uh, how it operates. There's teeth on here and teeth on here, and a bolt passes through here. And that way, the foot pedal can lock in every position. So you can get your perfect adjustment. So you can see on here we have 20 divisions here and uh, 20 divisions here. And they line up right with each other and turn in all directions. So the pedals can be adjusted to the user's uh, preference. The problem is... On this other frame, it's been uh, completely torn off. And so, I have to make a new uh, foot peg. It should be noted that uh, this side is actually shorter than this side. This size is going to be about two and uh, three quarters of an inch long. And this other side here, if you're missing this side, is about one and seven eighths of an inch. You need to start off by uh, squaring the stock. Uh, if you have a lathe, I recommend doing it that way. If you don't, I'm going to show you how to do it with a file. And uh, you can see how rough this is. And it needs to be perfectly 90 and as flat as it can be. So I've right to strap this uh, workbench I'll be using to this uh, anvil here. And that'll make it so it'll be a nice steady bench so it's not jiggling around while I'm trying to make this gear. So you're going to take the file. Uh, Simmons or Nicholas works pretty well. And you're going to put one hand here and one hand here. I like to put my finger here. And you're going to start filing. And what you're going to do is you're going to transfer the forces between your hands to try to keep the file from rocking. So when you're here, you're putting more force on this hand and less force on this hand. When you're here, you're putting it about equal. And when you're here, you're putting more force on this hand and less force on this hand. Because you don't want to be rocking around. And as you're doing this, you're going to want to change directions every once in a while. And then even once in a while, you're going to want to change the whole direction of the piece. Notice that I'm using uh, brass inserts to keep the jaws of the vise from marking the piece. Now, you're also going to be listening to it and looking at the pattern that you're creating on the surface. Uh, if you hear something like this, then you know you're cutting off an edge. And you'll see a shiny spot on the edge. What you want to do is to see a nice, even... Uh, file marks across the surface. You don't want to see it at the edges unless the edges are higher than the center. Working across, transferring the motion, transferring the motions, transferring the motions. Um, again, rotating it around. So you can see that it's going to be very hard to uh, do it absolutely perfectly. And you're going to end up from your rocking motion with a slight convex surface. So once your majority of your filing is uh, finished, what you're going to do is you're going to start doing uh, cross filing. So once you get the surface a lot better, you're going to start cross filing it like this. Usually on an old file, this surface here in the very back tends to be the sharpest because it received the least amount of use. So then you're going to be changing directions. Changing directions compensates for any bias you have. You know, you might file one direction a little bit more than you do the other. And if you do it right, I've already done the other side. You're going to come out with a nice flat surface. You can see that's nice and 90. You can hold it up to the light even and check it that way. See if you can't see any light through it, which I cannot. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your uh, Sharpie marker and you're going to uh, color the whole thing. If it's not black enough because your Sharpie marker is a little old, then let it dry and do a second coat. Don't be going over it again because you'll just smear it around. So I've locked these two together just using a C-clamp. I've intentionally put the screw on this side. And that way when I'm tightening it, it doesn't try to turn this and uh, smear the paint. 
because you can see that uh, this area here will uh, brace it from turning a little bit. Next what you're going to do, preferably using a mechanical pencil because it maintains a very sharp point, is very carefully and precisely mark out the point of each tooth. All 20 of them. Alright, so I cut this little paper piece out here. Uh, it's a half a circle with the same diameter as this piece here. You can just uh, draw a line, then set the compass to the radius. That'd be half the circum the diameter. And then trace it out and cut it out. And you can use that on here. And you can connect the teeth together to make sure that each tooth, as you're filing it, goes right to the center. So you just put it on there, and uh, you scribe a line. You can see that it shows up well against the black uh, marker. And you do that, so when you're filing, you don't file this direction or that direction. So the thing to note is that the angle of these teeth is actually uh, 90 degrees. And the file is 90 degrees. And we can use this file to make those teeth. So try to imitate the angle they're at. Hold the file something like that. You're going to go on these teeth here. Make sure I'm cutting through the middle. Right there. There. And file very gently. You want to take a lot of care in this. And you can always check it against the actual teeth. And you can look at it and be say, oh, that looks like it's going to fit right in that. Or it's not going to fit right in that. And then you can adjust the file a little bit this way or a little bit that way. Um, after you go around and do all those, what you're going to do is you're going to start rotating the file onto that line and going across very slowly. Because if you just try to go across like this, you have a tendency to slip. So I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to file directly across. So you filed all the way across, and what you're going to do is, uh, after you've done this all the way around, you're going to take a marker, color it in, uh, line up the piece as best you can, and then you're going to smack it with a hammer. And what you're going to see is it's going to wear away the paint on here. You want this stuff obviously to dry. And wherever it's worn away, that's where it's touching. And so you'll have to file it a little more this way, or a little more this way, or that way, or sometimes you got to tilt the file a little bit more. And you're going to keep doing that. And you'll get down to finer and finer stuff, so you get smaller files sometimes, and just kind of work your way in there for fine-tuning things that are just a little bit off. And if you do everything correctly, you're going to end up with a piece like this. And you can see that it lines right up. They can change in all directions. This is handmade. Then I uh, took it on a lathe, just because it's so much easier. Drilled the hole, uh, deburred it, and uh, bored it, because my TIG welder can only do 185 amps. And the limit of that is about 3 16 of an inch. And so I made this about 3 16 of an inch. And that allowed me to weld it, because otherwise it's much too thick. And that's how it's done. Okay, you can see the piece is going to be uh, bolted in place. I'll have uh, the second pedal here, and I'll make sure that the pedals are both uh, in line with each other, and that this is in the correct position. We'll bolt it on and uh, weld it on. There you go.